This is a UPS spectrum that has been measured from gold. The shape that we see here is characteristic of signal that has been generated as a result of a helium-1 lamp. So we expect the principal signal to derive from photons with energy of 21.22 eV. There are two thresholds within these data. There's the initial threshold below which no signal is recorded and then there's a final threshold beyond which in principle no signal is recorded. And these two thresholds are of interest but what we're going to do in this video is look at how you might characterize the threshold on the higher end. The most straightforward way of characterizing an edge such as the one we see here is to make use of background types that model a step. So if I create a region on the quantification parameters dialog window and then I introduce a step down background type, the shortcut is SD and I press return. Do I need to initialize the coefficients? Yes. That gives me the starting point from which optimization can then fit a step function to these data. So what we see here now is the characteristic error function type shape that fits this edge and provides a position that is supposedly characteristic of where this edge actually sits in the energy scale. There is another background type that is related which is edge down and that's ED is a shortcut. When I press return do I want to initialize the coefficients? Well no, I've just fitted an edge in the form of the step down background type. If I don't initialize the coefficients, coefficients meaning the fitting coefficients for this edge, then I'll just keep the same shape but because it's an edge down this time it calculates the position based on a line that passes through the point of inflection and also has a gradient that is equal to the point of inflection and where this intersects with a horizontal line. This becomes a measure of the position for this edge. So these two provide a very straightforward and basic way of calculating a position for a step down in the signal. There is an alternative to using backgrounds to calculate the edge and that is to construct a peak model. And the peak model is actually not a peak model, it's actually uh, a sigmoid shape model in the sense that you can construct a component that has a Shirley type shape and that will mimic what we see here in the error function. Let me just copy the VAMAS block that I've got here so I don't alter the current step down background type. So I've taken a copy of the VAMAS block. I've got the edge down background type that was there before on the original VAMAS block and I will change this to be a minimum limits. So that alters the background from trying to mimic the shape to simply trying to estimate the lower limit that one might expect for a sigmoid shape. So if I just adjust this a little bit, we can now see the region over which we might try to model a sigmoid shape using a component. And it happens that if you use the Shirley background prefix applied to a Gaussian function, and that's a GL0, that's, so this is a pure Gaussian, then we end up with a sigmoid shape that's calculated by integrating this Gaussian. And if I give the limits to the area sufficient width, then when I say fit, I end up with, as you can see here, a sigmoid shape that fits the data. So in principle, this sigmoid shape will mark the position of the edge. And this is the position as you would see in the case of the step down background type where the point of inflection is 
deemed to be the energy for the edge. Now one of the reasons that you might do this is because you would like to use some other measure for where the edge actually occurs. That Somewhere here is where the response starts to happen of electrons being emitted from the, from the material as a consequence of these photons. And one way of estimating that might be to differentiate twice the shape that we see here and use the point in the second derivative that represents the point of inflection in the first derivative as the definition of where the peak limit might be. So I'll do that now by using an option on the test data property page and replace by diff comps index. This means I select a component so it's this is the component index minus one it's the only one so I don't have to worry about any other component indices but this will differentiate all components with the same component index so when I press this button once I end up with data that is the first derivative of that sigmoid shape and as I suggested the first derivative of sigmoid shape is in fact a Gaussian it happens to be inverted because it was an, an, a complementary error function but nevertheless this is the error function or the Shirley type shape that when differentiated produces this result here which is a, a, a nice Gaussian without the influence of noise and this is the main reason for doing this is to eliminate the influence of noise when we take derivatives. So I've got a, a derivative spectrum and because it's a, a smooth curve I can simply do differentiation to get the second derivative and once again zooming in now we have this point here represents the point of inflection in the first derivative and that is one measure for the position of a peak so to the regions and I just adjust so that I then calculate the position of this peak maximum. So this is the peak maximum of this second derivative. That could be a reasonable estimate for the energy at the point where the signal starts to become significant in the spectrum.